I'm Mike, and today I wanted to talk about Bill Nye's recent response to an environmental question about veganism, in which he was generally supportive of plant-based diets, saying, As I noticed that my diet is becoming increasingly vegetarian, the next little while I may be all the way over. It might be tricky for a lot of people, however, it seems like a good idea. Cool, but in the rest of his answer, he sort of exposed that he might not have the whole picture on diet and the environment, which could explain his lack of urgency despite his passion for the environment. So I wanna clarify a few things, looking at a ton of studies as usual. All right, let's go. On Big Think, this girl asked the question. And I went vegan after I watched documentaries like Before the Flood and Cowspiracy. It presented me with lots of terrifying information, such as that from the FAO, which suggests that 14.5 to 18% of the world's global emissions are due to animal agriculture. Um, however, World Watch suggests closer to 51%. I was wondering if you knew why there was such a difference between these two figures and whether you think that adopting a vegan diet is the best thing we can do as individuals for the planet. His initial response was right on track. And the problem, everybody, is that livestock eat plants, then bacteria in their livestock stomachs metabolize the plant material into methane, natural gas. And you can make all the jokes you want, but methane is a very strong greenhouse gas. The first place I'd look to find the reasons for the discrepancy between the two figures is in the amount of greenhouse gas supposed to come from a cow or a sheep. Yes, the discrepancy in percentages was largely methane numbers, but World Watch's 51% was so much higher largely because it used a 20-year time frame. When compared to carbon, quote, the new widely accepted figure for the global warming potential of methane is 25 using a 100-year time frame, but it is 72 using a 20-year time frame, saying it's more appropriate because things are happening right now. And yes, ice caps are melting right now. And in addition to that time frame, they also looked at damaging the carbon sequestration potential of forests from livestock deforestation. Bill, I'm sure you're aware of why we call the Amazon the lungs of the earth. They are responsible for about a quarter of our land-based carbon sequestration. But you might not know that, according to this report, 70% of Amazon destruction is from livestock. And other reports are higher. So that explains why the World Watch Institute's report was so much higher, but there is another discrepancy I want to mention, and that is how the FAO went down to 14.5% from 18% a few years earlier. It is worth noting that in that time, they did partner with the International Meat Secretariat and the International Dairy Federation. Just saying, you can draw your own conclusions. Then Bill sort of goes off into some claims that I don't necessarily agree with in terms of their relevance, like... However, if humans weren't there, animals would be all over the place anyway. It's not clear that they'd be in these concentrations, though. This is kind of like justifying starting forest fires because forest fires happened in nature in the past, and also a bit like saying greenhouse gas emissions are okay because volcanoes also emit greenhouse gases. It is still our human carbon footprint from raising and slaughtering 70 billion land animals a year. These are measurable impacts just like manufacturing or transportation. Another thing he said really just seems to represent a will solve it later attitude, which I think is really dangerous to have and explains his lack of urgency. He says, Also reasonable that agriculture researchers are going to produce or breed farm animals that produce less methane by changing the bacteria that are in their stomachs. For another analogy, this is a bit like responding to the question, should we stop driving oil-powered cars to help the environment with something like, don't worry about it, one day all cars will run on sunrays. See how that could be a little ineffective? Not only does it take the blame off the person in the present, but we already have things like solar-powered electric cars and that hasn't solved the problem. Unlike future technologies, we can change our habits now, which I should give him credit for saying, because he did say that. The next little while, I may be all the way over. Why aren't you now, Bill? It's a great question. So just how much change would that be in terms of CO2? Well, according to this study, which didn't look as deep, it didn't look at prevented sequestration from deforestation like the previous report, but it says that going from a high meat diet to a vegan diet would reduce your dietary CO2 equivalent emissions by about two thirds. And moving on, there are so many other things that breeding or genetically modifying a cow to create less methane won't solve, but a vegan diet could solve. 
For example, this paper published in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences says that raising livestock, or not being vegan, uses nearly one-third of the Earth's ice-free land, and that is land that could be used to fight climate change. The paper also mentions that it uses one-third of the Earth's fresh water. That is a very bad strategy for being prepared for our climate-driven droughts. And both of these are from feeding animals, whether that's grain or growing things like alfalfa as feed. In fact, depending on the source, we feed 33 to 50 percent of the Earth's grain to animals. Which emphasizes how it's more than just the methane of raising animals, it's also the carbon footprint of growing all of that grain. Combine the fertilizer used to grow all that grain with, as this government report says, livestock creates 39 billion humans worth of waste in the US every year. All of that inorganic and organic fertilizer going down waterways is why animal agriculture is also likely the leading cause of dead zone creation. Now that we're talking about the ocean, much like how chopping down forests prevents carbon sequestration, killing whales prevents carbon sequestration in the ocean. Wait a minute, killing whales? What? Yes, the main cause of whale death is not being vegan, is bycatch from normal fishing, according to the U.S. Ocean Commission. As I mentioned in a recent video, whales fertilize the ocean, they fertilize phytoplankton, which is responsible for the majority of the ocean's carbon sequestration. The ocean's carbon sequestration, by the way, is 48% of the Earth's total carbon sequestration, so it's huge. And we have studies calculating how much carbon sequestration is prevented from killing certain whales, for example. But it goes beyond whales. From this report, eating animals is likely the leading cause of species extinction. Since it is not only the major driver of deforestation, but also a principal driver of land degradation, pollution, climate change, overfishing, sedimentation of coastal areas, facilitation of invasions by alien species, and loss of wild carnivores and wild herbivores. That is huge. All right, next I want to address this CNN clip. Cows, that's right. Cows are responsible for releasing more greenhouse gases in a year than 25 million cars or burning a year's worth of oil in the Keystone Pipeline. Bill, shouldn't we all just become vegetarians? Well, that actually, there's a lot of studies about that, but let's just do no, two no, no. things. No, 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 so, so, so it, that wouldn't would be that great. be a just good policy? Just keep in mind, 25 policy? million cars is nothing. There's 25 million cars within 10 kilometers of where we're sitting. And so that's not a Wouldn't very Wouldn't it be a good statistic. policy directive, though, Thank to you force for the us distraction, all though. to become vegetarians? Okay, that would be great. I do not know where CNN got the statistics. Ever notice that news outlets don't seem to feel the need to cite their sources? I don't know if this statistic was just wrong or taken out of context, but going back even to the more conservative FAO reports, we see that transportation, all of transportation combined, is directly comparable to raising animals. We are talking about all of the planes and trains and buses and cars, and there are one billion cars on planet Earth. Doesn't mean they're all being driven, but I'm sorry, that statistic is super wrong. And I will tell you one thing, Bill, you are doing way better than your friend Neil deGrasse Tyson, or Neil deGrasse Tyson Chicken, as I like to call him. Any relation? Kidding, I don't actually call him that, but I am a bit disappointed in him with views like this. By the way, cows don't actually exist in the wild. We invented them to turn grass into steak. Rather than give up my 16 ounce ribeye, what I'd rather do is invent a way perhaps to scrub CO2 out of the atmosphere. Which I find extra disturbing when contrasted with this older PETA video he's in. In the animal kingdom, whenever we presume some level of intelligence for them, further research shows that they're smarter than we ever thought. Humans aren't as good as we should be in our capacity to empathize with feelings and thoughts of others, be they humans or other animals on Earth. So maybe part of our formal education should be training in empathy. My 16 ounce ribeye? Empathy. My 16 ounce ribeye? Empathy. How can you care and then not care so hard? Anyway, Bill ended with a good question. Why aren't you vegan now, Bill? Check in with me in a few months because I noticed that my diet is becoming increasingly vegetarian. The next little while, I may be all the way over. Why aren't you now, Bill? It's a great question. Bill, part of the reason you might still be eating meat and contributing to all of the things I previously mentioned is that you're largely relying on future solutions that haven't happened yet. You have to look at yourself in the same way you look at people when you tell them they need to change their CO2 spewing habits now. 
So to recap, well, livestock's methane emissions are one big piece of the puzzle. Going vegan also means not squandering one third of the Earth's land and fresh water, not using up a third to half of the Earth's grain, protecting the carbon sequestration of the forests and the ocean, and stopping the leading cause of species extinction, and so on. So in the end, a couple years back at the University of Central Arkansas, you said, oh, that place my answer to that, we can't just wait until cows fart techno-fantasy rainbows instead of methane. You need to lead by example and make the future happen now. So don't wait a few months to go vegan and then next time somebody asks you about going vegan, say you're gonna wait another few months to go vegan, go now, give it a try. I mean, we all know Captain Planet was a vegan and we should all be following his example. Except maybe the blue skin, that much colloidal silver is probably deadly. All right, that's it for this rant. If anybody feels like like tweeting this video at him, at Bill Nye, or sending it to him somehow. That would be awesome. It would be cool if he saw this, but I am also just glad that you guys watched it to this point. Okay, feel free to let me know what you'd like me to talk about in the next video. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.